Now, technology firms are rushing to fix a security flaw identified in computer chips made by a number of leading manufacturers. The defect could enable hackers to steal sensitive information from nearly every modern computing device and smartphone which has the chips fitted. Well, uh, to help us understand this, let's bring in cybercrime and technology expert Dr. Stephanie Hare. Welcome to you. How worried should we be? It sounds pretty dramatic. Well, we don't know of any reports of data being stolen yet. So on the one hand, this exploit is, is known, this problem has been known for months. People have been working with the companies involved that make the chips to come up with the solutions to fix it. That's known as a patch. And people have been rolling those patches out. However, in the world of cybersecurity, nothing is ever done perfectly. So nobody, you know, people might not be patching. That's a constant problem. People have exceptions to patching. It's onerous. We just don't know yet. When you say patching, what does that involve? So patching is like you have a, you have a way, you, have, you build a system, right? And then you discover that there's a hole. And in that hole, people can get in and steal your data. So imagine a patch, if you want to come up with like a physical analogy for it, just literally patches over it. Only in this case, it's code that's sort of written ex post facto. They, they didn't write that code initially because maybe they didn't know. Right? They didn't know that the error was there. You kind of find these errors out in computing all the time. And what's interesting about this one is they think that this, this flaw has been there for at least a decade. Right. And in terms of what the owners of these devices should do to receive the patches, is it simply a matter of regularly updating when it tells you to update your software? Exactly. And here in the United Kingdom, the National Cybersecurity Center has said, again, just stay, with, stay current with your updates, to stay current with your patching, and stay in touch with people who are providing the, um, the upgrades to your system. So they are not, at this point, there's no reason to panic yet. There's no... There's no it's really important to say this. There's no evidence yet of a data breach. That's still to come. That forensic analysis is still to come. Right, so at the moment, there's the potential for a data breach. We don't know if it has happened and to what extent. Exactly, and it's really important to know as well that you know the story only broke yesterday, but it had been planned to be released on January 9 to the media. So we're just hearing about this a few days earlier, so that might not be so great for the companies that are just a little bit behind on getting their patching ready, but only by a few days. So. Hopefully, they've got it and they're on top of it. That said, there's two flaws here. One of them is much easier to fix than the other one, and we're still, all researchers are still working through the implications of that. So this is a story that we are likely to hear more of in days and weeks to come. How widespread are these particular chips? Uh, well, it's pretty much every microprocessor <laughs> right. on every uh, laptop, tablet, smartphone, and... Um, desktop in the world. Right, okay, so no one really escapes from this. No. So when you see an annoying notification saying there is a software upgrade hanging around waiting for you to download it and install it, you mm. should take that straight away. Don't just delay thinking, oh, it's going to shut down my phone or my iPad or whatever. Yeah, it's really important to stay current with patching. This is easier to do on a consumer level. So, you know, you and I on our phones, when we get that, it's easy for us to just install. And frankly, we'll just do it overnight when you plug your phone in, right? It's harder for companies because, again, patching can slow things down. There's a trade-off between convenience and security when it comes to IT, and each company is making a different calculus on this. So this whole question of being like cyber resilient, it's very different. What you are, are willing to tolerate in terms of risk is really different to what I will as a business. Problem being that this stuff, you know, we're seeing it's so fast and it's global. Yeah. It's really challenging for companies. What is the worst case scenario? Ooh, I wouldn't even want to speculate I mean, something how, how like that on television. I mean, how vulnerable is this, this defect? How, does, how weak does it leave the systems if it's not remedied? Again, that we do not know. We, need to, we really need to wait. And I, I know it's very difficult when we're in these worlds. Um, we, we all hate uncertainty, but there are very good people who are working on this who will do the forensic analysis and who will correct for it. So what I would say is, in terms of exercising caution, in the UK, you've got the National Cybersecurity Center. In the United States, you've got the Department of Homeland Security. They are issuing things. The established companies that you know and respect are putting out their own statements. Just stay current with those. And every company's got a chief information security officer. They are all working on this. So people are aware, and they've been working on it for months. Again, this di it isn't just that we just heard about this yesterday. It's just that it was made public yesterday right so do the updates keep your devices safe and stay vigilant and this right. is a great opportunity for all of us to review our cyber resilience practices to end on a reassuring thought <laughs> dr. Stephanie Hare thank you very much